This is kind of a long one. This is a 1993 Land Rover Defender US spec. Start by sketching up all the design opportunities and then as the client approves them, move them into PDF. Then promptly into CAD, sometimes uh, laser scanning the original parts, other times just taking measurements, calling out the beloved McMaster components. Here's the side vents that we designed. Here's the top fender vents that we designed. And here's the front grille section we designed. All these parts from Land Rover, unfortunately, are all Toys R Us plastic and kind of cheesy. So first, we disembowel the truck, get everything out that we don't like, start pre-fitting and engineering the new stuff, like that LS3 from GM with a 4L85E automatic to an enhanced stock transfer case. Then physically fit that into the engine bay, do all the metal crafting for the intake tubes and peripherals, then powder coat everything. Media Blast first. Uh, modify the firewall to fit the climate control system and put on some seriously LA wheels so that we have visibility to see everything. And then once everything's mock fit and we know it's all getting t along together, then we tear it all down, media blast, epoxy coat, powder coat, the chassis, replate all the factory trim pieces and details, and then anodize, polish, plate, brush, whatever. So here's the body raw media. Here's Johnny, the leader on this project, smiling because he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. Here's all the powder coat exoskeleton. Then there's the chassis. Ta-da! It's all done. Our buddies at Twisted Rovers in the UK uh, sent us over a crate of their special axles with Alcan brakes. And we plumb everything. You know, we're running the Aeromotive in-tank pump and sump. Uh, stainless steel for all the plumbing. Uh, stainless braided for all the soft lines. And then third and final assembly phase. Under that passenger seat, we hid the audio components. Here's all the CNC parts back from trim. Here's the uniquely surfaced front headlight bezel into which we fit these LED lights. It's all the LED lighting everywhere. Here's some more of the hinges that are anodized and some of the door hardware showing you the original Gacky plastic versus our redesigned version in aluminum. Those front fender vents, we do a stainless steel insert weave that we discovered, so we handcraft those into the CNC parts. There's some of the anodized factory parts all together. So slowly coming together, final paint, body is polyurea coated, everything's been fab, so now it's time to assemble the dash and the gauges and get it all together. So there you can see the polyurea coating on the bottom. And let's take this bugger for a drive. These defenders, I don't know, it's, I have sort of an ongoing love-hate relationship. Uh, one part of me loves the simplicity and the beauty of them. The other part of me hates the fit and finish and quality standards. Um, now, out of respect for Rover, let's face it, they weren't intending for people to get all dressed up and take these out and about. They were agricultural tools. So fit and finish really wasn't a concern. It was about building them as cheaply as they could to distribute globally. My challenge is when people come to us, they'll come to us with a love for maybe the aesthetic or the guiding principles of a vehicle like this, but without any patience for the, shall we say, archaic charm of vehicles like this. So a gas pedal that's kind of an on-off switch doesn't really cut it. Same with uh, ergonomic concerns. So they just take a lot of work. So that being said, they're really a great challenge and I should stop complaining. Um, they're just brutally expensive to really kind of rethink and re-engineer to this level of detail. But fortunately we have clients who say, even after I warn them and complain about the shortcomings of the original design they say yeah 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 I don't care I love them and it's what I want so who am I to complain right so here we are we're done um, this vehicle took a fair amount of time to complete um, but we really enjoyed it every step of the way uh, the probably the most frustrating thing was you know scanning say the grill pieces and getting those all dialed in in CAD, 
just to find that the symmetry we created in the CAD file uh, was all but useless because the truck isn't symmetrical. So we literally had to back up on a lot of those parts um, and redo them with those variances in mind. So for example, instead of a 90 degree junction on this headlight pod where it meets the grill, the top is 89.125 and the bottom is 91.625, or I don't know. So it, it's, it's a bitch, but it was fun. So on all the anodized trim, uh, we took it and brushed it and then came up with an anodized finish with our partner to uh, really try and give it more of like a brush stainless feel. It's actually looking at an IWC um, pilot's watch and used that sample, uh, that finish as a sample when we went uh, to get the anodizing done. We did some of it anodized and then other components, predominantly the ones that were black from the factory, other than these uh, grill and headlight pods. Those other ones we powder coated black. Front bumper is basically an Icon Bronco bumper. I cheated and then just modified the mount points. That allows us to fit the 9.5 Warren winch very hidden with the Viking recovery gear and then the Vision X uh, aircraft landing lights, which uh, really work out nice. The back bumper is also uh, an Icon bumper based on our FJ and then modified, and I'll show you more about that soon. These are one of my favorite parts we did from the factory. These are like a half pound piece of black ABS plastic that fades and warps and really does nothing. Uh, we turned that into actually a functioning intake vent. There's the military spec connector for the roof mounted LED light. There you see the custom hood hinges and windshield frame hinges. Those we actually didn't have to engineer. We found those from a supplier in the UK, which was seriously good news. That saved us a little bit of work. Hinges are nice. You know, the factory ones are, are cast, I believe, with mild steel, and then they weep and rust immediately, and they're known to crack. Door handles, again, were plastic fantastic, so we redesigned those, cleaned up the design a little bit, created a texture for your fingers on the back side to grip. Um, here are the side fender vents, uh, which are just kind of a modern uh, rover design language. They honestly, don't do anything. I just thought they look cool. Side marker light guards, uh, designed specific for this. And probably here's my favorite, uh, the rear view mirror. Um, this has ratchet indexes for adjustability. Uh, everything is blind tapped, no top plane hardware. Then the mirror head is the third point of adjustment. And uh, these came out really cool. Again, the factory mirror is just really begging for uh, kind of a redesign. So this truck is out of here soon. Uh, there's going to be numerous magazine features on it coming out uh, in various uh, Rover Easta mags. And hopefully the purists don't uh, rip me a new one. Um, it's not for everyone, but it's really not trying to be. Uh, the client had uh, numerous uh, adventures in this model uh, all over the world. And uh, just for something here in the States, he wanted something that reminded him of that. But we didn't build this to be like a monster rock crawler or anything nutty. It's really built for more civil duty. Um, go to the ranch, go to the country, go to the beach, stuff like that. But to be perfectly comfortable flying along on the freeway as well. So here's that dual pivot icon rear bumper. Obviously we modified it to run Land Rover style LED bullet lights in the back. Speaking of the back and the rear, we did uh, jump seats. These are icon design jump seats, and then these fold up and tether really quickly to give you access to the flat cargo area. The dog cage uh, was imported and modified, and Klein has dogs. Back door, we took the original shell and trim pieces and netting, but then we hand wrapped it and vacuumed it in uh, American bison hide, which is something we've been using on several projects and this client really liked. These are free range bison, so the hides are not perfect, but that's part of the charm. They are, however, pretty darn durable and have a super cool feel. Here's all those CNC trim pieces on the door, final assembled. Pardon the fact that this truck is filthy and I haven't detailed it. Uh, the weather's been pretty nutty here as we do our test drive miles, so we'll shine it up before it goes to the client. 
And now we have the biggest hour eating aspect of the entire job, which is completely re-engineering the dash firewall, gauges, steering columns, steering wheel. The dash alone represents hundreds of hours of fabrication, including 16 gauge mild steel with CNC details such as all these dash knobs and the AC vents, to custom gauges, to a laser cut, uh, actually water jet cut, ribbed stainless insert across the backside. Um, the point of this dash was to kind of hark back more on the Series 2 and again, as usual, try and ask ourselves what would the guy who drew the modern Defender have done with all the details if the pencil pushers hadn't cut every possible corner and kind of ruined his vision, which unfortunately is not something unique to Land Rover. CNC pedals, that was the Tuffy console with the audio compartment, automatic tranny 4L65E low car shifter push button. And then we're running the stock transfer case and gauge and linkage. We just added uh, indicator lights on the dash for, for low and locker. It's another shot of those gauges. Uh, came out really nice, American made. Here are the AC vents, also American made and something we found off the shelf from our dear friends at Vintage Air which is really convenient. And there's the glory shot. Here's the back passenger area, same design for that rear door. And then two more of the icon style uh, bison wrapped seats in the rear. Uh, you may have noticed in the earlier footage, uh, we got rid of the plastic handle and CNC that as well. There's aircraft LED lighting throughout the interior tied to the door switches. And then the carpet, I've been using this new carpet quite a bit out of Germany. Ha Garten Square Very good. For the headliner, we got rid of the cheesy cardboard and did Alcantara. And then uh, those are gas hood shocks that cuts a little quick so you couldn't tell, but we thought that would be nifty. And then here's the GM E-Rod LS3 fully fit. We're now ending up with literally quadruple the horsepower and I think roughly triple the torque of the original while saving about 75 pounds, reducing emissions by 40% and efficiency by 20. You just can't beat that. Gotta love technology, especially GM's efforts with these E-Rods. Wilwood Brake Master to a dual diaphragm vacuum booster. There you see the fuse panel. So hand-built harness, mil-spec connectors, blah, 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 to uh, GM uh, fuse panel we source, so it's uh, more trackable. Here's the certification logo, or emblem rather, for GM there. This intake took a lot of work, but it was our way of making that fender top vent actually do something. And then there's a water trap in there and a conventional filter, and then that still makes it California emissions compliant. Although this truck's going out of state, it doesn't really matter. It was just kind of the right thing to do. So I think that's about it in the engine bay, other than uh, those were small dual fans, and uh, here's that bar certification label a little better. So I appreciate your interest as always. Much obliged. This video is a bit long, but for those that made it to the end here, kudos to you. Any questions about ICON, give us a call at 818-280-3333 or visit icon4x4.com.